I am so stoked to have my next guest join us. They have a new album now called Everyone's Gone, and I know I'm the cause. It is the greeting committee. Ooh. Hello, hello, hello. Pierce, Sadie, Noah. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Can't yeah. complain. Yes, we were just chatting off camera. Five years have come and gone, and yet we haven't changed. Not a you bit. still look the same. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. We yeah. don't need to age. We're just as naive as before. Absolutely. Yeah. If we're, not more so. We're, we're just talking and it still feels like we're in our early 20s, but we just realized we're 26, 27, 28 now. And yeah. It's all kind of happened before I was married. What? I'm married, yeah. Wow. I feel, wow. Like, I feel like the biggest thing is like started this tour, like getting in the van for the first time. And uh, it's been a minute for us. Like this is like six and a half week run. And I'm like getting in the van. I'm like feeling it in my back. I'm like, oh my God, this is like day one. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like we have six and a half more weeks. I'm like, it's just like remember, remembering what the muscle memory is like. Wow. Like, uh, doing this yeah. for this long. What, what's it like for you guys, especially having done this for what, 12 years now? It's, it's, we're on year 10. 10. Mm-hmm. On year 10. Feels like 12. It, yeah. it absolutely feels like 12. It feels like a lifetime. Yeah, I mean, Addie still has her own row in the van, so that hasn't oh, changed. Okay. So she gets to lay right. down, even though we have eight crew members all kind of packed into uh, into the van like sardines. Throwing but. me under the bus. Throwing me under the van right now. Hey, you enjoy your comfort. And I, I yeah, that. and I'm trying to get you to get in on it. You know, know. I'm trying I, to let you let yourself be a diva, but I know. you won't do it. I'm still really good at like sleeping like I'm in a coffin. I'm just like arms oh, closed, geez. hat down. <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of good pictures of it. I know. Life of a musician. Are you admitting on camera that you still have a twin bed at home? <laughs> like Thankfully, no. a I do not. I do not. <laughs> it's been a while, mm-hmm. and obviously things have changed. You've grown as people, like you just mm-hmm. referenced. And late 20s is a lot different than teens, early 20s. And, Absolutely. And yeah. here we are. You're independent again. Mm-hmm. Our frontal lobes are developed. That's exciting. I was about to say, yeah. your, your brain matures as you age. Absolutely. Right? Do you feel that? Oh, yeah. It feels wonderful. I feel really good. What are the words of wisdom that you can share with us with regards to that? Because looking back at 21 year old Addie when we first met, she was a mess. <laughs> I'm, I'm a mess now, but in like a more refined way. Yeah? Yeah. Like Brat Summer mess? Absolutely. You know what's up. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Always a brat summer. Yeah, I will You're say. You're having a brat summer more than anyone, I feel I like. I guess so. I mean, there's always something interesting going on in your life, but I feel like this is the first tour where I've seen you more like reserved and kind of composed and I don't know, just like strong throughout it all. It's like all of that therapy has caught up to me. I know the two therapy sessions a week are really yeah. doing wonders. It's wow. amazing. Everyone needs to do it. EMDR, yeah. somatic therapy, changed my life, for sure. I'm not familiar. What is EMDR? So EMDR is it's eye movement. It's like reprocessing traumatic events or just events in your life and like creating new neural pathways. But somatic therapy is like a body therapy. So you're focusing more on that versus talking through something. When you write music and lyrics for a living, talking through something probably isn't difficult. At least it's not for me. And so finding other ways to like work through life has been really helpful. And this is a therapy that's not, it's not that it's necessarily new, but it's newer than just typical talk therapy. So yeah. Wow. And and you've seen the progress, the change in yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. How about you guys? Do you see this change? Have you watched well, she's like, this she's change like doing it in over the van. time? Like, <laughs> <laughs> not doing it in the van. That would be awful. Oh my God. No, not doing it in the van. I would do something like that in the van. It's not from like, yeah. it's not from shame or anything. I'd totally do it in front of everyone. Yeah. It's more to protect y'all. <laughs> You've been through enough. <laughs> Get me up to speed here. Noah, how long have you known Addie and and Pierce? Because obviously they were the core of the band and started this way back when. Right. Like, um, you know, we were kind of in like familiar high school area. Like we're all from Kansas City and I was playing in a band in high school and like Pierce and I would play shows together uh, Mm -hmm. during that time. So like that's where I kind of got to know Pierce. And then I just knew Addie because she was in the band and I knew just like through that familiar circle. Um, but then I was at college, um, at North Texas and they needed a place to stay. And I was uh, really close to their manager at the time, um, who reached out to me. And so I just ended up playing music with them throughout the night. And then, 
I got a call like two weeks later and then that was when I started and that was about six years ago. And then now it's been really cool to like see, okay, what does like the two guitars that were on stage, what does the one guitar do now? And mm. it's really cool to like be the one that was the filler. And now it's, I get to kind of do bo both a little bit and to do both is like really nice. It's always fascinating to me when a band that has been around for a while kind of moves people around yeah, and, and yeah. others join, but those people have known each other for quite some time. So for the fans yeah. and the listening public, it's like, who's this? Right. And yeah. for you guys, it's like, yeah, eh, it's just good old Noah. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like Noah said, Noah and I have known each other, played in bands since before the band even existed. So there's always been that friendship there. Um, but maybe in the last several years, Noah's really taken that, that leadership extra role that maybe wasn't necessarily wasn't a position that was open when we like first started working together, but he's filled that role incredibly well. I feel like that's something I definitely want to compliment Noah on for sure is just his willingness to do what is best for the team and for the band and for the project and his patience, I feel like is unmatched and not a skill that I have. And I really envy and admire that in him and to watch him yeah grow into this leadership role as lead guitarist over the past year has just been super exciting for sure the new music is amazing this album is so good there's so many Thank great you. riffs in there the, the the you know people use the word earworms quite a bit and mm -hmm. you know i don't want to overuse it but there are earworms in here and what yeah. was the perspective in creating different sonics that wasn't as indie rock that was kind of the core sound of the band initially. Yeah, I I think a lot of it was part of just the environment that we're working in. I mean, I think before it was very much just like the four core members that were just trying to work together and create music. When it really dropped down to adding me writing a lot of this stuff, um, that was just like the environment of being in our living room, trying to write music that we weren't really felt like we were able to write before when it was a four piece. It just didn't really creatively go that direction. But when Addie and I were dreaming about the future, like of the songs that we wanted to create for at least this next project, um, it kind of leaned more into like, let's just have fun playing like live. And some of it leans more into like our pop influences. Um, I, I won't say that's probably like our forever dream, but for this record, yeah, I think we probably lean more into like, how do we make kind of more concise, fun pop songs? Pop money hits. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's what you're making here. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying. <laughs> what was it like making pop music? Because yeah, that one was really There's interesting. A, some stigma. I think, oh yeah. Oh, huge stigma. And that's the thing is the song is actually really ironic, and a lot of people missed that, which was frustrating on my end of things to witness because I'm like, no, you're not getting it. I'm I'm more so poking fun than anything. But also, I'll say that. I feel like we were making a more vulnerable move in releasing a song like that than the other maybe quote unquote more vulnerable songs that fans would pick or point at as vulnerable. I think that if we hadn't created an album like Dandelion or songs as stripped down as like say Elise that I, I don't know that I would have felt comfortable enough to make a song like Pop Money Hits. And for me, I think just getting to the point of okay, I've been doing this for 10 years. What happens if I just allow myself to have fun with something and to not be so worried about whether or not I'm a deep enough lyricist or a serious enough lyricist? I feel like at this point, I've hopefully proven that and I don't want to continue making music just to prove something. I want to be able to really enjoy it. Yeah, especially when you we've built a lot of our career off of being an indie band. And I think it's kind of hard to do a hard pivot like that into pop music when kind of all along, we've always been trying to write popular music. I don't think it's always our intention to write super deep, like music that only a select few people will want to listen to. I think we are just writing what feels natural at the time. I love it. And I think that maybe the industry and just the way that people are consuming mm -hmm. music nowadays is a lot different than when you first started. Five years after you started, <laughs> I think a lot of things changed around when TikTok came about and really exposed mm -hmm. to people to Fleetwood Mac 
and all these older songs mm. that maybe are not in the alternative world that are like, okay, this is cool. And now we're in a brat summer and Charlie XCX is having a- <laughs> I love it. Like she never went away and people are learning about her. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. It's crazy. I think that it's really interesting actually because her album Crash that came out before Brat was a huge influence for Pierce and I. It yeah. was our favorite thing that we were listening to while we were in the midst of creating the record in 2023. And so I'm, I'm so happy she's getting that recognition. Yeah. I saw her at Lollapalooza. She wasn't um, the headlining act, but she was like maybe the one before the headlining or two before. But the crowd was so insane. It, it kind of looked like what Chapel Rowan did this year of just clearly they deserve to be in a later slot and even if they're not in a later slot people are going to show up and i think that that's really cool to watch and be witness to and i i feel lucky i got to be there and see charlie do that i'm living for it i love i love it all you know i think a lot of us loved pop music forever mm -hmm. but we're kind of like hesitant to talk about it because you want to make sure you have your cred in talking oh, yeah. to whoever, yeah. right? It's yeah. not like as cool as like some other types of music. But I think that's something going back to, you know, frontal lobe developing. That's yeah. something that's cool as you get older and you stop worrying about what everybody else thinks right. as much. And so right. now I think it's lame to think pop music is lame just for the sake of making that statement. Yeah. Like if you really can't find anything you like out of popular music, I don't think you're actually listening right. then right. to as much as you could be or should be or whatever you want to say it is. But yeah, I think I think that's a lame take. Yeah, whether it's like... Let people like things. Pop music that we're like aiming for, I feel like the thing that was driving me was just like writing music that was unapologetic. Mm -hmm. And then I think that was a lot of like the Charlie XX is like mm -hmm. pop music that is just you're having fun and you're not sorry for like what you're doing. And then there's songs like Sex and ha Taxes that isn't necessarily that big pop song, but is still kind of unapologetic in its own way. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks so much for making this album and, and great to catch up with you guys. It's so good to see you. Good to see uh, you. Thank you for having us again. Absolutely. I, well, it. you know, there was a thing called a pandemic that kind of got in the way. I know. Yeah. You know. It won't be five years again. You're right. Please. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't wait for the show and, and best of luck with everything. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate you. The folks of the greeting committee right here on B-Sides. Mm -hmm.